Christina, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I appreciate that. Would you mind introducing yourself? Sure. My name is Gina Molinari. I am a confidence and communication coach, so I help people get really clear and confident in the way that they communicate and how they show up in their business, specifically with online visibility. Well, I appreciate that. And since we're talking about hindsight 2020, maybe I should have rethought this interview. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to rise to that occasion. Uh, you know, it's funny. I get that feedback a lot. Like, oh man, I'm so nervous because you're in the audience. I think you're judging me. Like, I'm not always on. It's okay. But I give you tips so you can be better moving forward, right? Well, I appreciate that. I'll expect a write-up <laughs> after this. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so moving on with the hindsight 2020 mentality. Yes. I want to know, has there ever been a moment for you as a business owner and as a coach, has there ever been a moment that you wish, dang it, I wish I would have known before I did this? Only everything leading up to this point, you know, <laughs> all the things that I wish I had known sooner, all the lessons I had to learn the hard way as opposed to learning from other people's mistakes, which, I mean, you do a lot of reading or you have coaches of your own and they teach you things, but I'm somebody who apparently needs to learn the experiential way. <laughs> somebody who needs to learn by, by failing on my own and really kind of intrinsically understanding it and, and get that muscle memory of it. Um, so there's quite a few things that I really needed to fail and feel the experience of that failure in order to, for it to really sink home and, and kind of take the reins back on what it was I was even pursuing in the first place. How did you get through that? Ooh, well, I guess it helps if I give you a more specific example, right? So my background is actually as an opera singer. I did my undergraduate to be a classical singer. And when I went to go graduate or apply for graduate school at the same school, I had taken a year off, continued working with a voice teacher, and I didn't get into the program. Huge blow to the ego. And I sat there th wondering all the ways of all the things I did wrong, all the things that maybe I should have done more of, or instead the interpretation that I wound up coming to was the place that trained me didn't want me, so who's going to? Um, and that took a long time to kind of heal from because the thought of that ever happening never occurred to me. It never occurred to me that I couldn't get into the program that trained me in the first place because they accepted me for the undergrad. Why wouldn't they do it for that? So, I mean, I basically reevaluated my entire future as a result. And yet here I am years later, still loving music, still very passionate about it. That love will never leave me. It's just what I went into school for in the first place, I wasn't clear about it and the assumptions that I made along the way, the assumptions that my career had to look a certain way because that's the way we were trained, that's not what I ever really wanted. And I didn't listen to that instinct. I didn't listen to what I truly wanted in, in my mind and in the way that I actually showed up in my training. So of course, that was actually something that now I understand was the best thing that could have happened to me because the evolution of that, you know, that's what I bring into people communicating. For me, it was always about the message. It was about connecting to people and getting them to feel something with music because as a classical singer, you're often not singing in English. Like how are they understanding and feeling what it is you're trying to convey? You have to do it with your body. You have to do it with the tone of voice that you're using and just generally your facial expressions, all of these different things together. Um, so for me, it was always about kind of contributing some sort of emotion and message to a situation. It was never about performing and being on stage and wearing a wig and corset and all of that crap. Like, this never interested me. So to be stopped in my tracks from pursuing that track really forced me to reevaluate where I actually wanted to go. So it did serve me in the long run, but man, did I have to learn that lesson the hard way in the first place. Well, so many of us stop when we get thrown to the wayside like that when we get rejected yeah rejection is one of the biggest issues in life mm -hmm. unfortunately it either holds somebody back entirely mm -hmm. or like you you reevaluate you dig in and you find a new passion so yes. people who went to college got a degree didn't like the industry they went into mm -hmm. jump ship and start up companies there's something cool and powerful in that yeah but usually they don't do it alone yeah I mean you're a very powerful communicator everybody that you talk mm -hmm. to uh, can really feel your emotion and your excitement and a lot of the tenacity that's built in is because of your experience. Okay. When you're working with business owners, moving from a fear of rejection to what could I be, mm -hmm. how do you take your experience and their need and meet in the middle and communicate that? Well, to go back to your original point about this all being about hindsight, I mean, the, the biggest lesson I had to learn along the way and the evolution and all the iterations of businesses and things that I tried in between where I was and where I am now 
was letting go of this guilt of the fact that I was changing courses many, many times. So, you know, I originally had started a business. My first business was coaching musicians how to be entrepreneurs. That is not what I do now. And I had to learn by failing in that business that, oh, I wasn't communicating the value of what I was doing. So it was shift, 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 shift. And you know, I, I had been doing content writing for a while and social media strategy. And for the longest time, I had such guilt about, you know, switching gears all of these times. Like, you know, what do people think of this? What do people think of me that I can't pick a lane and stick in it? You know, <laughs> like I obviously have a talent for some of these things, but I, I don't want to do them after like a week. So what is wrong with me? And I just kept having this conversation about it. But in hindsight, the perspective shift that I can give myself is that I needed all of those things to build up to where I am now. And I didn't realize that's what that was when it was happening. At the time, I was just judging the hell out of myself for it. But now I see that every single one of those experiences is what gives me clout and, and credibility to do what I do in the way that I do it, that only I can do it. And that's not to say that other people out there can't do the things that I do or coaching what I coach, but I can do it the way I can do it and nobody else can do it that way. And that's true of anybody else. And it's why I don't believe in having competitors. You know, they can have the same business model, the same training, the same services, the same pricing structure, but we're going to have very different experiences in who we work with and who wants to work with us as a result of that. So for me, that perspective shift of letting go of that guilt of what it took for me to get there was really, really the big part. No, perspective is powerful. When we're in the trenches, we can't really see it, mm -mm. especially in the trenches maybe even a year apart. Yes. It might seem like a long time, but a lot of people can't get it out of their own way. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think is hilarious right now, and I am guilty of doing this, is at the end of a decade, we decided that it would be fun to post what it was like at the beginning of the decade for us mm -hmm. and what it's like now at the end of the decade. <laughs> and we laugh about our failures and we, mm -hmm. and we champion where we're at. Yep. And everybody's willing to do that because it's 10 years and it's, it's acceptable, right? Mm -hmm. but when you're in the trenches and in the moment, telling somebody that you're failing and telling them what you're doing to change your life or transition, you almost feel guilty or prideful and you feel maybe that they're gonna judge you or, yeah. or put some pressure on you and stop you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got rejected when you were trying to get into mm -hmm. a profession of singing with, with opera, right? Mm -hmm. I tried to be a country music singer and I fell apart. It was, <laughs> it was uh, less good than I knew. <clears throat> but here we are, you know, it's, yeah. it's fun a decade apart. Mm -hmm. That's the whole fun part about looking at the hindsight with our experience. Mm -hmm. But how do you take that as a professional who's advising business owners and engaging entrepreneurs on their journey to grow? How do you take that and create a proactive relationship towards the future? How do you communicate that? The work that I do winds up being this awesome kind of combination of mindset work and strategy because you need a strategy in order to get to where you want to go. You know, you have goals, you have financial goals in mind or maybe just where you want to take your business. So you need to have a strategy in place because just keeping yourself busy obviously isn't going to get you anywhere. It needs to have direction. But there needs to be the mindset piece and that's where the confidence piece that I love to speak into and coach into is really important because yes, you need to keep moving forward so that sometimes your fears don't have time to catch up to you so that you're doing that. And what winds up happening is you fail faster. So when you fail faster, you can learn faster. And then that sort of, you know, year gap that you're talking about in the reflection, like, oh, it's fun to, you know, look back now because I'm not in the thick of it anymore. That time between them that it's okay to talk about it and that you're laughing at yourself or owning it becomes much, much shorter. So I do a ton of speaking and public speaking and I coach a lot of people on public speaking as well because there's a huge confidence piece in that and it is an entirely different marketing strategy that you can add to your business. But so many people, I mean, it's the number one fear above death is public speaking, right? <laughs> so how do you get somebody who literally the thought of public speaking makes them wanna vomit, how do you get them on stage and be as impactful as possible? Because everybody has something so significant to share in their knowledge and their wisdom and all of this, but if they're not doing it in a confident way, in an engaging way, it's not gonna matter. No one's gonna listen, no one's gonna remember, no one's gonna pay attention. So you have to get them on that stage failing faster, failing often until they're just okay with it. Because I make plenty of mistakes, but I can laugh at myself in the moment now. And yeah, I can laugh at myself about something I messed up just yesterday. That, that buy time becomes so much shorter. So you just have to fail consistently over and over again 
until it's no longer something that you really need to have that downtime in the moment to say like, oh God, you know, what do I do? How do I move forward? So do you find that the reason that people are able to fail faster is because they've got the confidence of a partner like you on the side to help catch them as they fall, yeah. pick them right back up and say, get out there and do it it's, again? It's cyclical. It's cyclical. This idea of having confidence so that you create consistency and the consistency there breeds confidence because you're doing it over and over, proving to yourself, building this evidence that what you're doing isn't going to kill you because sometimes that's what it feels like. Like it feels like you're going to die. All these fears that come up for us, whatever it is, public speaking or otherwise. So being able to just keep moving and keep that cycle going builds the confidence, builds the consistency, builds the confidence, builds the consistency. And it just, it just feeds on itself until eventually you don't even recognize yourself anymore. I have one client in particular I'm thinking about right now. I've been working with her in some capacity for, I think since March, I've been working with her. And the feedback that she's getting from people about how much she's transformed in the past eight months. I mean, I got a nine minute voice message from her the other day saying, this is all because of you, because you made me basically, <laughs> you made me, you know, do these things that otherwise I never would have had the courage to just do on my own and to, you know, push myself out of the nest, so to speak. Somebody needs to guide you through that and tell you it's going to be okay. So yeah, there's some cheerleader in it, but at the same time, I do have to push you so that you can do things that you're not comfortable doing because that's how you grow. Yeah. You're, you remind me of, of my kids, right? You, you watch a kid who maybe will stumble and fall and hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. And if you react, they want to react back. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. somebody noticed. I'm going to cry. I need, I need to be coddled and made whole, right? Mm -hmm. Take the same kid, does the same thing. You look away and don't notice it. Don't yep. engage in it. <laughs> just wait. And all of a sudden, they're just like, all right. They just bounce and they mm -hmm. go. Nothing holds them back. Yep. Somewhere along the way, we learned that it was okay to allow people to hold us you know, and, and nurture us and coddle us mm -hmm. when we have certain failures. We, we take the victim card and we just, we use it and we milk it, right? Mm -hmm. So business owners, unfortunately, don't have that luxury, yeah. right? If you wanna be really successful, you have to push through that pain and you have to avoid letting people coddle you and engage you and validate your failures. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they shouldn't validate your failures as if they're a good experience. I'm saying validate your failures as if you're a failure, you should quit. Mm -hmm. Right. People are generally, unfortunately, ready to jump on somebody else's problems. Mm -hmm. Right. Because nobody wants to focus on their own. Yeah. So it, it goes back to the kids. As long as you provide that mental awareness, mm -hmm. this is where they want to go. This is their need. And then you push them out there to fail. But don't let them sit on that failure. Mm -hmm. Rest their laurels. That's that's powerful. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because people also go too far the other direction where they have to do it themselves. And even if people are asking for the opportunity to support them or help them or something, they refuse to do it. No, I have to do it on my own. And I, I'm my own example because literally the first sentence that I had as a child was me do. Like I wanted to do everything myself. And I, there were many arguments about me trying to put on my jacket that was taking 20 minutes to do because my little arms couldn't go. Um, but like I just wanted to do everything myself so badly that it took me you know, going to, through leadership training to realize that that was something that was actually really hindering me in a lot of ways, that it's okay to ask for support when needed because it doesn't always have to look like a financial investment to get that as a business owner. Like that's what that can look like most of the time. Mm -hmm. But there's other ways to get that sort of support. There's other ways and resources to be able to, to break through that sort of fear too, because that is a fear. And I think we, we think we're being strong. We think we're being resourceful, but sometimes we're just shooting ourselves in the foot. Mm -hmm. Wow. You might fall short and not know it. Mm -hmm. it. It's hard to know what you could have been if you don't have something to measure it against. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's important to have mentors. Yes. Because if you find a mentor, especially in the industry you're in, or somebody that understands your industry, they can elevate your awareness and allow you to rise to the occasion rather than you yourself measuring what you think is the threshold. When in, in fact, just like personal training, you could have been 10 times better. Mm -hmm. I think the only reason I've ever been successful in anything I've done is because I've listened to a very powerful mentor that I get to work with every day, and he stretches me. Mm -hmm. And quite often it's frustrating. Yes. And it should be frustrating, mm -hmm. because if it was easy, everybody would do it. Mm -hmm. You know, There's no joy in just being lax and, and letting things happen. If you let things happen, life will take a turn for where they want it to go and not what you want. Mm -hmm. So, Gene, I want to go back to the fact that you are in, you're empowering people to take risks, mm -hmm. and you're letting them fail as concise as you can be, and I know this is going to be hard, <laughs> what is one tip that you would give business owners out there or entrepreneurs moving forward in 2020? What is one tip 
that would help them empower themselves by engaging proactively with a partner? I think one of the most important things is to really cultivate this authentic sense of self and create a sense of groundedness in yourself because when things get hard, when things get challenging, when the money's not coming as consistently as you'd like or whatever that looks like, you need to have a sense of peace and, and strength in you to keep going. And the more you're trying to fit into some sort of box and do it the way you think you have to, as opposed to getting innovative or creative or, or even just you know allowing yourself to try something new again, continuing to fail so that you can find what does work, it's just that much more exhausting to be somebody else and to do things that you don't want to be doing. So cultivating the sense of authenticity, yes, it breeds better connection and more solid connection, but I think for you to have a sense of peace in being who you are and just letting that be one less thing to worry about can actually be a really powerful business tool that I don't think people realize. And do you hold people accountable when they do that? Oh, hell yeah. Because I see right through that. I see right through that. And that's the thing is like, that's become a superpower of mine just because it's something that I live so strongly all the time now. So I can smell when somebody's being, you know, they want to be the perfect mannerisms of whatever they can. No, you're you making me blush me. again. <laughs> I have that effect on people. No, it's just, it's just something that I, it, it makes me sad is what it does, you know, because I just, I, I have such freedom and joy in just being who I am all the time that I don't have to be. And that's not to say that there's not different versions of us, like a professional version of us versus the version with our best friend. But to me, I am essentially that same person. I just may clean up my language a little bit because I'm from New Jersey. So of course there's some cursing that comes with that, right? But I'm, I'm still ultimately the same person. I may wear different clothes and like be a little more formal, but that doesn't mean that I'm a different person in different scenarios. And to do that is exhausting at the end of the day. We have long days as business owners. We have lots of responsibilities, other people's lives sometimes in our hands because they're our employees and we're responsible for them. How, how do we do that when we're exhausted all the time? Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, that that's a good tip. Yeah. Well, thank you for in agreeing to do this interview and yeah, thanks for in me. empowering our viewers. Thank you.